The 1989 McDonald's All-America team has one of the most dominant players of the modern era, and behind him are several guys who carved out solid careers in college and the pros. That said, there are still a few good NBA players who, for whatever reason, didn't make the cut in 89. The list of players who didn't make the squad includes two-time slam dunk champ Harold Miner, one-time champ Isaiah Ryder, one-time All-Star Nick Van Exel, one-time All-Star and three-time champ Sam Cassell, and four-time All-Star Vin Baker. With all that said, let's take a look at what happened to every McDonald's All-American player from the 89 squad. Kenny Anderson Anderson went to NYC powerhouse Archbishop Malloy for high school, becoming the team's second straight McDonald's All-American after Robert Verdan made the team in 88. He was widely considered one of the best players in the country. Colleges started scouting him in sixth grade, and he was the first player to make four parade All-American teams since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Anderson decided to head to Georgia Tech for college, joining Dennis Scott and Brian Oliver to form Lethal Weapon 3 and make the 1990 Final Four. In 91, the two upperclassmen left, and Anderson averaged 26 points a night to make the All-American. American squad. He jumped into the 91 draft and was selected second overall by the Nets. Anderson was the youngest player in the NBA that season, but played well in limited minutes. In his second season, his minutes doubled and he responded with 17 points and 8 assists a night. Anderson's third season was his best, averaging 19 points and nearly 10 assists to make his only all-star team. During this period with the Nets, it looked like Anderson might form a big three with Drazen Petrovic and Derek Coleman, but Petrovic sadly passed away in 1993. Anderson kept producing for Jersey, but was traded to the Hornets in 96 for Kendall Gill. He finished out the season in Charlotte and signed with Portland in the offseason. Anderson again played well, but was traded to the Raptors in 98. He refused to play in Canada, so he was traded again to the Celtics. As Mr. Chibbs aged, he continued to play well, though never reached his all-star level again. He played with Boston through 2002 when he was traded to the Supersonics. Anderson was largely a rotation player by that point, but played through the 2005 season with four more teams. He spent one last season playing in Lithuania before retiring for good. Anderson has since made several media appearances, including joining the cast for Pros vs. Joes, being a part of Dennis Rodman's basketball diplomacy effort in North Korea, and participating in Dwayne Johnson's reality show, Wake Up Call. He has seven children by four different women, including a daughter with DJ Spinderella from salt and Peppa, and two daughters with Tammy Roman. In 2018, he became the head coach at Fisk University, an NAI school in Nashville. He's still working there as of 2024. Aaron Bain Bain was one of the two players from this class to play his college ball at Villanova. The 6'7 forward was a consistent contributor across his four years with the school, but his best season came as a sophomore. That year, he averaged 10.4 points and 4.5 boards. For his career, he averaged 7.9 points and 3.4 rebounds while starting 66 of 119 games. After college, Bain transitioned into what looks like a successful sales career if his LinkedIn profile is anything to go by. Daryl Barnes Like Anderson, Barnes went to Georgia Tech as part of the school's loaded freshman class. However, the big man wasn't nearly as successful in his time there. Over his four-year career, Barnes started only three of his 63 games, averaging just 6.1 minutes and 1.4 points. That said, he was averaging 18.5 minutes and 6 points per game as a sophomore, but was only able to suit up for two games. I've been unable to find many news sources from the time, but it looks like his injury may have kept him from taking that next step during college. After graduating in 94, Barnes's trail largely goes cold, though he did play in two games with the Billings Rim Rockers in 2000. That team was part of the International Basketball Association, which merged with the CBA in 2001 and officially folded in 2009. Other than that, Barnes has faded into obscurity. Mitchell Butler Butler kept it local and was one of two players from this class to sign with UCLA. The 6'5 shooting guard didn't start a single game as a freshman, but was still a key player. The next year, he became an everyday starter and would mostly stick in the starting five through his last three seasons. Over his four-year career, Butler averaged eight points and four rebounds. He was also excellent at picking his opponent's pocket, sitting seventh in school history for steals. Butler went undrafted in 93, but quickly signed with Washington. During that time, he appeared in the 94 movie Blue Chips with Shaq and Penny Hardaway. He played there for three seasons, averaging around six points off the bench. He was traded to Portland alongside Rasheed Wallace in 96, playing for one season. Butler then signed up with the Cavs for two years before heading to Lithuania for a season and then joining the ABA. He got another stint in Portland in 2001, but only played in 11 games. 
The next year, Butler was in the CBA, winning a league title with the Sun Kings. Butler then got one last run with the Wizards in 2003, playing in 41 games and retiring after the season. After wrapping up his career, Butler started work as a sports agent, where he's still working as of 2024. Calvin Bird Bird was that other Villanova kid I mentioned earlier. He played four years for the Wildcats, but was largely a rotation player, starting only 36 of his 120 career games. He averaged 5.6 points, three boards, and one assist during his four years. Bird then spent a few years playing in the ABA in Switzerland before jumping into coaching. He worked on the field for 18 years with stops at UC Irvine, San Francisco, Pacific, and La Jolla Marymount. His son Miles is suiting up for San Diego State when the 2024 basketball season kicks off. Daryl Cunningham Cunningham started his college career at DePaul. During his lone season there, he averaged less than a point a night over 28 games and decided to transfer to Kansas State. After sitting out a year, Cunningham averaged four points and four boards a night at K-State. Those numbers grew to 11 points and nearly nine boards as a senior. He went undrafted but played a few seasons in the ABA and overseas, including stints in France and Switzerland. Cunningham then decided to switch to coaching, working as an assistant at Indiana State, among other stops. In 2019, he decided to move to the high school level. In 2021, he had a big health scare after he contracted COVID-19 and had a kidney failure. Thankfully, he's recovered and was back on the sidelines as of later that year. Anthony Douglas Douglas kept it local and played at Memphis. He sat out his first year, likely due to Prop 48 rules, though I haven't found a source to confirm it. When he got on the court, the 6'7 center played well averaging six points and five boards during his first year. The next year, he helped Penny Hardaway, David Vaughn, and the rest of the Tigers to the Elite Eight. By his senior season, Douglas was up to 12 points and eight boards. However, Douglas went undrafted. He then spent the next several years playing overseas, largely in South America. By the early 2000s, he was back in Memphis, living a relatively normal life while raising his family. Doug Edwards. During the McDonald's All-American game, Edwards hadn't signed with the school, but he eventually decided to play at Florida State. Like many, he missed his first year, likely due to Prop 48, but was an instant star when he got onto the court in 1990. Over his three years, the forward averaged 17.2 points, 8.5 assists, and more than a steal and block per night. For that, he was selected to two All-ACC teams and drafted 15th overall by the Hawks in the 93 draft. He played sparingly for two seasons, averaging just two points a night in 54 total games. In 95, the Grizzlies picked him in the expansion draft. He'd get more playing time and earn his Doughboy nickname there, but that was his last season in the NBA. In 2008, he joined Frank Martin's staff at Kansas State. He's since followed Martin to South Carolina and then UMass, where he's working as of 2024. Both of Edwards' younger brothers also played basketball at a high level. Steven was a McDonald's All-American in 92 before playing in Miami and several years overseas. Allen played his college ball at Kentucky before starting a long career in coaching. He's also working at UMass as of 2024. Jamal Faulkner. Faulkner was a high school teammate with another McDonald's All-American, Khalid Reeves. The 6'7 player originally committed to Texas before signing with Pitt. However, he was forced to sit out a season due to Prop 48, and during that time, Pitt was found guilty of recruiting violations regarding the young player. When he became eligible, Faulkner signed with Arizona State and made an instant impact, averaging 15.4 points, six boards, and a block and steal per night to win Pac-10 Rookie of the Year. However, his off-the-court problems grew after he was involved with a credit card fraud case. He and three teammates stole their assistant coach's credit card and spent over $13,000 on long-distance calls. His numbers fell slightly as a sophomore, but he still led the team in scoring. Unfortunately, he was arrested on assault charges after slapping his former girlfriend and spent six days in jail. The Wildcats dismissed him from the team. Faulkner missed the entire 92-93 season before signing with Alabama for his junior year. He led the team in scoring despite mostly coming off the bench, earning a starting spot as a senior. Alongside Antonio McDice, he led the Crimson Tide to a top 20 ranking and the second round of the NCAA tourney. Faulkner went undrafted in 95 and spent the next seven years playing all over the globe, but never made it to the NBA. It looks like he was working as a mailman as of 2015, though I may have the wrong LinkedIn profile. Sean Golden Golden took his talents to Georgia, joining 88 McDonald's All-American Laterial Green. Over his four-year career, the 6'4 guard mostly came off the bench, starting only 11 games. He averaged 3.2 points and just over a steal per game during his career. 
Golden didn't play much minor league ball, joining the Georgia staff as an assistant in 95, just two years after he graduated. Golden also coached at Winthrop and South Carolina State while doing broadcast work from time to time. He also opened up his own motivational speaking company and is working in that field as of 2024. Greg Graham Graham stayed in his home state to play under Bob Knight at Indiana. Those Hoosiers teams won more games than just about anybody from 91 to 93 as Graham partnered with Calbert Chaney and Eric Anderson. For his part, Graham averaged 12 points and three boards over his career, though he saved his best for last, averaging 16.5 points as a senior. That season, he was also named the All-Big Ten team and won the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. The Hornets selected him with the 17th pick in the 93 draft, but quickly traded him to the 76ers. He played in Philly for two seasons, mostly coming off the bench to average about five points a night. In 95, Graham was traded to the Nets in the deal that brought Derek Coleman to Philly. He played a bit, but was largely used as a trade piece for the rest of his career, doing short stints with Seattle, Denver, and Cleveland before he was finally waived in 97. He then spent a few years playing the CBA before diving into coaching. His most notable stop was when he returned to his high school alma mater for seven seasons. He resigned in 2015 to take care of his family in Rhode Island. Pat Graham Graham also stayed in the state to join Greg and Knight at Indiana. There's no relation between the two besides where they played college ball. Pat's career started well, averaging nearly eight points off the bench for the Hoosiers. However, he kept dealing with injuries, even sitting out the entire 91-92 season. As a senior, he got more starting opportunities and averaged nearly 12 points a night as Indiana made the Sweet 16. Once his college career was over, Graham started working in healthcare in Indiana. He was an assistant coach at the high school level around 2018, but seems to mostly be enjoying his life, raising a family in his home state. Alan Houston. Houston's father, Wade, played college ball at Louisville. Notably, he was the first African American to sign a scholarship to play for the Cardinals. After his playing career, Wade became a coach, so it wasn't too surprising that his son Alan took to the game. When Alan was in high school, Wade was an assistant coach at Louisville, but in 89, he took the head coaching job at Tennessee becoming the first African-American head coach in the SEC. Allen followed his father to Knoxville and was a day one starter for the Volunteers. The six foot six guard never averaged below 20 points during his four year career, making four straight all SEC teams and back-to-back -back all American squads in 92 and 93. When he left for the NBA, he was the all time leading scorer in Tennessee history. The Pistons selected him with the 11th pick in the 93 draft and he averaged 8.5 points while mostly coming off the bench. He improved his scoring and overall numbers in each of the next two years, averaging a hair under 20 points a night in 95-96. After the season, his rookie contract expired and Houston decided to sign with the Knicks, taking over John Stark's starting spot and injecting some youth into an aging core that included Patrick Ewing and Charles Oakley. New York had also added Larry Johnson to the squad that season, so things looked promising. It took a few seasons, but the Knicks made the finals in 99, losing in five to the Spurs. Houston then made back-to-back All-Star games in 2000 and 2001, but never got back to the finals. Ahead of the 01-02 season, Johnson retired during training camp and the team missed the playoffs for two straight seasons. In 03-04, New York brought in Stephon Mulberry and Penny Hardaway, but a knee injury kept Houston off the court for 30 games. During the next season, Houston only played in 20 games because his knee wasn't completely healed and he retired after the season. At the time, the league's CBA had an agreement that let a team release a player without holding his contract against the luxury tax. It would be coined the Allen Houston rule because Houston's huge contract and injury issues made many believe that New York would use the clause on him. However, he retired before the season, so there was no need, and New York instead used it to release Jerome Williams. In 2008, Houston was back with the Knicks as an executive. He's still working with the Knicks as of 2024. Houston's son, Allen Jr., played college football at Brown and Louisville. Bobby Hurley Similar to Houston, Hurley's dad was a well-regarded coach, though Bob Sr. spent his entire career at the high school level at St. Anthony, leading the school to four national titles and 26 state titles before retiring in 2017. Among his many D1 players was his son, Bobby. The young point guard won four straight state titles, losing only five games during his career. He then won co-MVP during the 89 McDonald's All-American game. Hurley signed with Duke and the winning ways continued. The six-foot guard did lose more than five games over his four years, but not that many more. He won national championships in 91 and 92 and was named the Final Four's most outstanding player in 92. He was a two-time All-American and made the All-ACC squad three times. While not a prolific scorer, he was a magician with the ball in his hands and is still the NCAA all-time assist leader with 1,076 during his career. He also played against his younger brother Dan in the NCAA tourney when Duke played Seton Hall. 
Not especially relevant, but a fun fact. In 93, the Kings selected him with the seventh pick. Hurley looked solid early, averaging seven points and six assists through his first 19 games. However, on December 12th, 1993, Hurley's SUV was broadsided by another car. He wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was thrown from his vehicle, suffering life-threatening injuries. Fortunately, he was able to recover and get back on the court in 94-95, but couldn't recapture his collegiate magic following his accident. Hurley played for five total seasons before retiring after 27 games with the Grizzlies in 98. A few years later, Hurley started working as a scout for the 76ers. He then joined his brother Dan's staff at Wagner College. In 2013, he became the head coach at the University of Buffalo, leading the team to their first NCAA appearance in 2015. After the season, Arizona State signed him to be their head coach. He's still working there as of 2024, while Dan is coaching at UConn and won back-to-back -back national titles with the Huskies in 23 and 24. Jim Jackson The 6'8 forward stayed in-state to play his college ball at Ohio State. He was a day one starter for the Buckeyes, putting up 16 points, 5 boards, and 4 assists on route to winning Big Ten Freshman of the Year. Over the next two seasons, his points average went to 19 and then 22 as Jackson made back-to-back All-American teams in 91 and 92. He also won Big Ten Player of the Year both seasons and was the UPI College Player of the Year in 92. Jackson decided to skip his final season and head to the NBA Draft, where the Mavs picked him fourth overall. Unfortunately, his rookie season was limited to just 28 games because Jackson held out over a contract dispute. The next season, he started every game, averaging 19 points a night to form the 3Js trio alongside Jamal Mashburn and Jason Kidd. In 94-95, he was on track for an incredible season, averaging nearly 26 points and 5 boards before an ankle injury caused him to shut down his season after 51 games. Things looked good in 95-96, but ahead of the next season, a rift developed between Jackson and Kidd. Rumors claim the source of the turmoil was a love triangle between the two players and singer Tony Braxton, but as far as I could tell, those have never been confirmed. Regardless, Jackson was traded to the Nets. He finished the season there, but New Jersey wanted to draft Keith Van Horn, so they traded him to the 76ers for the rights to the second overall pick. He lasted about half a season in Philly before reports started to come out that he was unhappy, serving as Allen Iverson's second banana, and was traded to the Warriors. Jackson played well, averaging about 19 points, but didn't like playing for a losing team, so he decided to leave after the season and sign with Portland. Statistically, he had one of his worst seasons to that point with the Trailblazers. The team was looking to move past its bad boy image after the season and ship Jackson to Atlanta. Jackson could still score during his limited time on the court, but was again unhappy that the team wasn't winning. In 2001, the Hawks traded him with the Cavs. Jackson played for six more seasons across six different teams, with his best run coming with Houston in 03-04 when he averaged 13 points and started 80 games. He retired after the 2006 season where he had the notable distinction of being the last Laker to wear number 24 before Kobe Bryant donned the number. He has since moved into the broadcasting world where he's still working as of 2024. His son Trevon played at Wisconsin before spending several seasons playing overseas and in the G League. George Lynch Lynch was another undecided player during the McDonald's game, but he'd signed with North Carolina for college ball. He contributed well off the bench as a freshman, becoming a double-digit scorer and starter as a sophomore. For his career, Lynch averaged 12.5 points and nearly 8 boards for the Tar Heels. He also made back-to-back All-ACC teams in 92 and 93, and led UNC to a title in 93 alongside Eric Montross. Lynch was then selected by the Lakers with the 12th pick in the 93 draft. As a rookie, he averaged nearly 10 points and 6 boards while starting 46 of 71 games. His play would slide off a little bit over the next two seasons, and he was traded to Vancouver in 96 so LA could open up space to sign a guy we'll get to shortly. He again mostly came off the bench to average 8 points and 5 boards before joining Philly in 99. The 6'8 wingman would help bolster the team's defense over the next three years, starting nearly every game and helping AI and the rest of the squad make the NBA Finals in 2001. Unfortunately for them, they ran into the team that drafted Lynch and the Lakers won in 5. After the season, Lynch was traded to Charlotte. He'd finish out his career with the Hornets, playing four more years and wrapping things up after 2005. In 2006, he joined the SMU staff under Matt Doherty, who worked there until 2010 when he joined UC Irvine as a strength and conditioning coach. Lynch then went back to SMU in 2012 before becoming a head coach at Clark Atlanta in 2018. His contract wasn't renewed in 2020 and Lynch started working in broadcasting for the Hornets. Bill McCaffrey McCaffrey joined Hurley at Duke. The 6'3 guard came off the bench as a freshman to average nearly 7 points a night. 
As a sophomore, he was a more consistent starter and the team's second leading scorer behind Christian Leitner. That team won a title in 91, so things were looking good on the outside. However, McCaffrey decided to transfer, saying later that he just wasn't enjoying himself at Duke and wanted to have fun during his college career. He sat out for one season due to transfer rules before starting every game at Vanderbilt in 93 and 94. He averaged over 20 points in both seasons, making the All-American squad and winning co-SEC Player of the Year in 93. He went undrafted in 94, but played several seasons in Italy, Germany, and Australia. In 2001, McCaffrey joined the coaching staff at St. Bonaventure. He joined Maine staff in 2003, and then spent the next decade or so coaching at the high school level. As of 2024, he's working as a basketball trainer. His older brother Ed played in the NFL, winning three Super Bowls and making the All-Pro team in 98. All four of his nephews played football at the D1 level, with Max, Christian, and Luke all spending time in the NFL. Christian was the NFL Offensive Player of the Year in 2003 and has made three All-Pro teams so far. Conrad McRae McNasty earned his nickname playing in Rucker Park. The 6'10 forward took his game to Syracuse, where things would start slow. The big man didn't start a game until his junior season because of guys like Billy Owens and Derek Coleman. That year, McRae averaged 9 points and 6 boards. He'd improved those numbers to 12-7 and seven as a senior, and he was selected in the second round of the 93 draft by Washington. He didn't make the final roster and moved overseas to play for the next several years. He made the FIBA All-Star team in 96 and 98 and won a Turkish League title in 96. In 99, he signed a 10-day contract with the Nuggets, but it was terminated after he fainted before a game. The next summer, McNasty was working out at an Orlando Magic Summer League practice in California. Shockingly and very unfortunately, he passed away while running wind sprints due to his enlarged heart. Tracy Murray as a high school senior, Murray averaged 44 points a night to lead the country. He then went to UCLA to play college ball. He was an instant contributor, averaging 12 points and 5 boards to make the Pac-10 All-Freshman squad. The next two years, he averaged more than 21 points and around 7 boards a night, making back-to-back All-Pac-10 teams. He skipped his final season of eligibility and was selected by the Spurs with the 18th pick in the 92 draft. A week later, Murray was traded twice in the same day, ending up on the Blazers. Murray mostly came off the bench for two and a half seasons to average around six points a night. In 95, he was traded with Clyde Drexler to the Rockets. Murray finished out the season and won a title before signing a contract with the Raptors. In his best season, Murray averaged 15 points and four boards with the expansion team. Before the next season, he signed with the Wizards and played well off the bench when healthy, averaging 11 points over 280 total games. In 2000, Murray moved to Denver and would spend the next four years jumping from team to team before moving overseas to play in 2004. He played in Greece and France before retiring in 2001 to spend time with his family. Murray has coached at various levels over the years and has been working as a broadcaster with UCLA since 2008. I maybe should have mentioned this a few entries ago, but it's worth noting that Alan Houston is his cousin. Shaquille O'Neal I've alluded to O'Neal in passing a few times, but the big fella was one of the most dominant players in the high school circuit. He was born in Newark, but his stepfather was in the military, so Shaq spent time in Germany before playing his high school ball in San Antonio. Shaq played college ball alongside 88 McDonald's All-Americans, Mahmoud abdul Rauf, and Stanley Roberts. He was a stud from the jump, but broke out as a sophomore, averaging nearly 20 points, 15 boards, and an astounding 5 blocks a night to win player of the year. His point and rebound numbers went down slightly as a junior, but he upped his blocks to 5.2. Diesel was made the number one pick by the Magic in the 92 draft. It was immediately obvious that Shaq was going to be a star, winning Rookie of the Year and making his first All-Star team in 93. Over his career, Shaq won four titles, three finals MVPs, one regular season MVP, 15 All-Star teams, and 14 All-NBA teams. What's really astonishing is that Shaq's achievements could have potentially been even better if the big man had taken better care of his body over the years. That's not to knock Shaq, just to make it clear how dominant he was during his heyday. In addition to his NBA career, Shaq released four rap albums, starred in several films and TV shows, and even had his own video game. I really could spend 20 plus minutes just talking about Shaq's life and career because of how much the man has done, but instead, we'll just move on. If you're watching this video, you probably know the Hall of Famer's career very well at this point. James Robinson Hollywood played alongside future pro Lindsey Hunter in high school. The 6'2 guard won the McDonald's dunk contest before heading to Alabama to play college ball. Like many players of the era, he set out a year as a Prop 48 player. He used the year off well, averaging 17 points and 4 boards during his first season on campus. His scoring run improved to 20 points a night as a sophomore and junior as Hollywood made three All-SEC teams. The Blazers selected him with the 21st pick in the 93 draft. He mostly came off the bench as a rookie, but did participate in the dunk contest, finishing last. 
Robinson got more playing time over the next few seasons after Portland traded Clyde Drexler to Houston. In 96, he was traded to Minnesota in a deal that included Isaiah Ryder. He continued to put up just under 9 points a night during his season with the Timberwolves before signing with the Clippers. He spent a year and change there before being waived and rejoining Minnesota. Hollywood then played in Greece for a season before joining Orlando for six games in 2000 and retiring after the season. Since then, he's mostly been coaching and training at the youth level, and he was named an SEC basketball legend in 2018. Michael Tate Tate originally signed with Maryland to play college ball, but switched to Georgetown after Maryland coach Bob Wade was forced to resign during an NCAA investigation. However, the 6'5 forward injured his knee during warm-ups of the 1989 Capital Classic. He thought it was a muscle pull, so it went untreated, and he showed up at campus without the athleticism that had made him a top recruit. He decided to play through the pain instead of getting season-ending surgery, and averaged just 3.2 points as his knee injury kept giving him trouble. It's also worth noting that he asked the Hoyas to change his name back to Vinson during the season. He had changed his name to Tate when his mom remarried, but decided to switch it back when he went to college. With his injury, Vinson lost trust with coach John Thompson, and he decided to transfer to James Madison at season's end. Over three seasons, he averaged six points and 3.5 points while earning his degree. Tate mostly faded out of the public eye in the years since, but his daughter Michaela Vinson played college basketball at Virginia and Georgetown, averaging double figures all four years of her collegiate career. Dion Thomas Thomas was another undecided athlete during the McDonald's game, but he signed with Illinois for college ball. He was an instant star, averaging 15 points, 7 boards, and nearly 2 blocks a night as a freshman. Over his 4 years with the school, he averaged 18 points, 7 boards, and 1.5 blocks, becoming the school's all-time leading scorer, 5th in rebounds, and 2nd in blocks. Thomas was selected in the 2nd round of the 94 draft by the Mavs, but never played in the NBA. Instead, he'd play overseas through 2008. He won two EuroLeague championships and three Israeli league championships. During that time, he also became an Israeli citizen. In 2009, he became the head coach at Lewis and Clark Community College. In 2014, he was an assistant at the University of Illinois Chicago. Two years later, he joined the Fighting Illini Sports Network to call men's basketball games. He continues to work in broadcasting while also working as the Associate Director of Development at Illinois as of 2024. Jeff Webster Webster stayed in state to play for OU. Boo! As a Sooner, Webster quickly became a walking bucket. He only played in three games as a freshman before taking a redshirt. The next year, the 6'8 forward dropped 18 points a night to lead the team and win Big 8 Rookie of the Year. His numbers went down slightly as Damon Patterson averaged 21 points and 9 boards a night, but he took his scoring average to 24 a night during his senior season and made the All-Big 8 squad. Webster was then selected in the second round by the Heat in the 94 draft. He was traded to Washington and played in 11 games before his NBA career ended. Webster spent a bit of time in the CBA before retiring. He's largely stayed out of the public eye in the years since, though his son Justin played at Hawaii and UNLV from 2014 to 2024 and played in the summer leagues with the Mavs in 2024, but doesn't appear to have earned a contract. Matt Winstrom The 7-1 Winstrom signed with North Carolina to play with Lynch. The big guy played for the team for four seasons, but only averaged four minutes a night. While he didn't rack up many stats, he did win a title in 93. As you'd expect, Winstrom went undrafted in 93, but his height led to the Celtics signing him as a free agent. He played in 11 games, averaging 1.6 points and 1.1 rebounds. Winstrom then spent time playing overseas before leaving the game behind. There's not much info out there about Winstrom, but he was working in Colorado as of 2007. In 2024, Shaq said that he almost signed with North Carolina, but Winstrom had already signed there, so he settled on LSU and the rest is history.